so when I, I, I told the friends in, in, in the primary that my mom got a new job, she's going to be a teacher and I'm going to be moving from the school, you know. And then that's when they actually started treating me much better because it was quite a big deal going from public school to private school at that time. The only thing they didn't know was that I didn't pay school fees because my mom was a teacher there, you know. Now... I, I went to, to study, to study there. And that time, uh, my father decided that, you know what? Uh, I've been staying with my mom because he was staying with, my, with his mom at that time. I, I think it's high time I find my own place. So that's when they actually found a stand. And then in the stand, they actually built a small shack, just a small shack. So when my mom moved to... To, to the new uh, work, they took me along. So Mara, we moved to a new home. So now I was no longer staying with my grandmother, like from 2006, uh, middle 2006, I think. So I think it was around, yeah, somewhere there before June though. So I moved to, to a new home, which was, I would say, fully owned by my mom and dad. However, that was a shack. So that's how I got to... To, to start staying in a shack, you know? Now, from 2006, now everything is, 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 is looking to be in place. I think I, I was around about 11 years. Now, I've had a problem. I've had a problem around about that time. Uh, I was actually fat, ne? I was actually fed around that time and 2007 I fell extremely sick you know extremely sick that my mom ended up thinking that maybe they are bewitching me because I moved from uh, public school to private school because obviously they didn't know that I moved there because of favors and so forth you know and i started becoming sick and people in the hood started talking you know uh, that was the time hiv you remember hiv and aids that was the time it was starting at around that time you know so people were saying that i'm sick because i have hiv you know and my mom was thinking that maybe they are bewitching me because of that and so forth and it was very very difficult you know and my grandmother actually said that i man the reason why this child is losing weight i think i have an idea so my grandmother that's when my grandmother took me to this other granny she took me to this other granny uh, may her soul rest in peace she took me to this other granny and then this other granny found out Hore, I have a problem, you know, like I have this, I have this hole here, like on my chest, like here, there was this hole, the hole was actually big enough that you can even pour water, like here, you can actually pour water, yeah, so my grandmother took me to this other granny, which she knew, and then this other granny diagnosed me the way she diagnosed me, I don't know, and then they found out that I have what we call Sibedi Bedi. It's a Bedi disease. And Sibedi Bedi is not caused by anything specific. It's, it's just uh, one of those natural diseases, you know. It's just one of those natural diseases. It's a long Khore. Yeah, you can't really run away from. So what happens with the disease, the way she explained it, Khore, when you eat food, I don't know how it happens, but when you eat food, the disease will eat the food that you ate. After it has done eating the food that you ate, the disease will now eat you. Meaning that if you were chubby, you will start losing weight. You know, you start losing weight and so forth. You know, now uh, the granny healed me. She did her rituals. She cut me with razors, putting some powders and all that. 
you know those traditional petty things and she told me that i will never i will never go back to the same size that i was before meaning that i will actually never be fat again you know and then uh, people in the hood didn't know about that so they were saying that i only 80 only 8 and so you know people will always talk. i think i should have learned from that moment that people will always talk whether you are poor or you are rich somebody somebody always has something to say so they were saying all those things but at that time i was staying in in another place i was staying in another hood actually so what they were saying at the village because i was staying in a kasinyana so a developing kasi it didn't really matter because i couldn't hear almost everything so slowly i was fading away from that lifestyle you know things were coming were becoming all right now uh, that was grade seven now my mom was one of my teachers in grade seven uh, she was not uh, that that good in teaching because she never went to school for it but she was one of the best teachers according, according to the principal uh, because she's a hard worker, you know. Uh, she's a hard worker, that woman. So grade 7, I completed my, my, my uh, grade 7 successfully. Now, the weight, remember before I was chubby. So now I was no longer chubby or fat. Now I was just a slender. I was thin. It's just now that I'm starting to have this things here but before now it's it's happiness now you know so uh when i was going to grade eight uh my mom noticed that there's a big difference from the hopoto that i was in primary at the public in the public school and the hopoto that i was after going to a private school you know because now I would know how to speak English, you know. And then when I was finishing my grade 7, going for grade 8, she, she didn't want me to, to go to, a, what you call, to go to a public school. Because you know how public schools are, you know. She wanted me to go to a private school. But problem was that she didn't afford. That was her only worry. But you know, God has his own ways, people. So 2008, January, when my mom was supposed to go back to that school to teach, uh, now she found a better job. Now a better job doesn't mean that she will have money, but it's far much better than what was happening or what she had before. So she resigned at the school as a teacher and then she worked for this other new job. And then she told me that, you see, now that I got a new job, I... Can make a plan i can't afford but i can make a plan for you to study a, at a, a, a private school a private secondary school so 2008 i went uh, for my grade 8 at a private school the name of the school it's in practice uh, it's in Tlatula science and commercial college i'm not sure if the school is still there or the principal for that matter so she took me there and then uh, what she did was that she took a loan uh, she took a loan to cover school fees for the whole year therefore she was paying the loan bit by bit during the course of the year so she paid school fees for the whole year so meaning that 2008 i never got to uh, worry about paying school fees you know then i started studying now my grade 8 was quite interesting you know grade 8 uh, which was in 2008 you know it was a new environment and all that you know but there was only one problem in grade 8 uh, in my class I was actually staying you know in grade 8 we used to share tables we used to share tables so in grade 8 I was staying with a bully you, you know those guys in, 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 in high school not in a bad way ne? But most of those guys who were bullies and bosses in high school, now they are the ones who are asking for two rents at the robot, robot calling us uh, say or brother. 
whatsoever. I don't know what happened. Yes. But yeah, I was staying with a bully. Now the guy, luckily, uh, he, he liked me. Meaning that I was his ice boy. You know, whatever that he wanted, then he would send me. And then in return, what I get is that nobody would touch me. If you touch me in high school, grade 8, you are going to explain to that guy. And then what I used to do for him, I used to do homeworks for him. Like when they give us homeworks, he, did, he, he didn't do any. And then now I have to go in, like school used to start at around 7. I have to go to school at 6 o'clock. Then when I go to school, I have to do his homework first. Before anything else, he's going to come around uh, when the, the, the class has started. But he must find his homework ready. Because at home, I was unable to do two homeworks. Because my mom was going to notice because she was all over my books. She was searching everything. So I used to go early in the morning, 6 a.m., do the homework for the bully. Then when he comes, then I, I give him his homework. So he used to pass because of me, you know, during that time. He used to pass because of me. So life went on, life went on. So problems started towards the end of the year. Towards the end of the year, that's when problems started. Now this guy, uh, because at the end of the day, yeah, we used to write sort of exams in a way. Like final exams in a way, you know. Uh, so before the exams like towards the end of the year this guy was actually i think he was about three to four years older than me meaning that i actually think that he was already sexually active to put it correct he was three to four years older than me but in grade eight same same grade as me i don't know what was happening but i'm not gonna judge him because I've stayed in varsity for almost more than four years as well, you know. So, now, this guy, uh, he started making me feel uncomfortable. Like, for example, remember he's a bully. He's the boss of the class, probably the boss of all grade eights. You can't do, you can't tell him anything. He was already smoking at that time. He was smoking a cigarette he was smoking weed whatever that needs to be smoking he was smoking so he sometimes in class when we're sitting in class he would put in you would put his leg on my on my legs like his big leg he would put it on my tiny legs and i would keep quiet because i can't do anything about it you know and then sometimes he would brush my thighs in class Remember the tables were those ones which are hidden. You can't really see what's happening behind. And then it started making me feel uncomfortable in a way. Because at that time, I was not sexually active, I would say. I was not into dating. Like I didn't even understand what was going on, I think. So he was brushing me. Initially, basically, I would say it's sexual abuse. <laughs> Coming to think of it now. You see, all these people who abused me, I think I must go for them one by one. I remember all their names. Actually, I, I, will, I must go for them one by one. So, yeah. So, he used to brush me, you know. And I would feel uncomfortable, you know. And then sometimes, after school, he would ask me not to leave, you know. And then, when I don't leave, I would do assignments for him. And then sometimes, he would like randomly kiss me on on the thing here don't get me wrong uh, he never kissed me on the lips and i never kissed him you know but those were the things which made me hate grade eight like i wanted the year to get done because i feel like you know what this is not okay but that was actually sexual abuse but don't get me wrong i was never raped I was just touched where I was uncomfortable, you know, and yeah, so uh, it happened. Now, towards the year end, Vela exams were about to start. Now with exams, here's what the principal did. When it was time for exams, um, 
the principal actually mixed us he thought he was gonna stay with us with me so that i can show so that he can copy my answers but the exams the the principal mixed us very so almost all the exams he was staying far away from me i was happy so i wrote my exam successfully and then i passed and then he failed now the last time i saw him was when we were fetching the report in december and he told me that since i've passed and he failed he's going to find me so i was actually scared at the same time what is he gonna do to me because now he's blaming me that he failed he's actually blaming me that he failed you know and <laughs> it's not my fault that the guy failed honestly speaking it's not my fault like there, there's there's nothing that i was gonna do to help him you know um let me just charge my phone quickly apologies uh, let me just charge my phone here yeah. yo guys i can really show but i can't find the hole like i'm trying to charge the phone here but i can't find the hole okay yeah i found the hole i found the hole now so yeah now luckily uh there were so many cases which were reported uh, which were reported against him so i think they actually dismissed him at the school so meaning that when i was going to grade nine he was no longer there so that was the last time i saw that guy even today i still i i haven't seen him even today but i'm sure he's probably in my dms right now if i find him utlonyela no agam now i'm not scared of him if i find him utlonyamasepa it's fine now great uh, 2009 oh before that before that uh, during the progress of 2008 that's when i started uh, this music thing you know my uncle used to get hired to play at weddings so he used to take me along so that's when i started this music thing you know i started uh, falling in, in love with music during the course of 2008 when i was still in grade 8 connecting speakers and all that so my uncle is the one who actually introduced me into this thing and then slowly i fell in love with it but i was not real, really serious at that time obviously now grade 9 february grade 9 I went to the same school again for my grade 9. Now, my mom did the same thing that she did the previous time, which was to pay school fees for the whole year via a loan. So, she took another loan, maybe, I don't know what happened. I mean, she paid school fees for the whole year and then she was paying everything bit by bit, you know. Now, grade 9, February 2009. I remember 2009 i was still staying in a, in a shack at that time you know so shh, there was a bash at school and then at that bash they said that they are looking for sound so immediately when i heard the class prefect say that they are looking for sound i went to the teacher the class teacher he used to like me a lot because i used to be smart you know and then i told him that my uncle actually have has he has sound that you you, you can hire you understand and then the school agreed and then I, I when i went home i told my uncle now the problem was that my uncle was working at that time so because he has trained me around 2008 to connect the sound to play using visual dj to operate the computer so he actually sent the whole sound system to the school without his presence and then I was actually the one who was playing. Like, the, the, I don't remember if it was Valentine's Bash or what, what, but it was around February. So I was, I, was, I, was, I was playing for the whole school. So that's when I actually started falling in love with being a DJ. Like 2009 when I was playing with Visual DJ. It was quite a dope event. It was nice. I really enjoyed it. I remember everything there. And then after the monday after because obviously the event was on a friday the monday after uh, i was starting to be the popular guy in school you know being popular the popular guy in high school used to be lit i don't want to lie you know so i started being the popular guy in 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 
in in uh grade nine so most people who were with me in grade eight they actually said that i'm actually cool they didn't think that of me because i was under the wing of a bully i was not allowed to make friends i was only allowed to be friends with the bully only if he sees me with any other kid that kid will get beaten he didn't want anything <laughs> to do with me you know so after that i started being uh, famous in school you know um I'm famous and all that. I didn't even have a name that time. Maybe I think I was DJ Hopozo. Yeah, that time maybe I think I was something along those lines. And then now not knowing, not knowing that this is going to affect me. That's when I my studies were actually affected. So in class, I would draw visual DJ. I would imagine myself uh, playing music, being a DJ. I would start dreaming man like in class i would lose concentration draw cd uh, not cdjs but visual djs related things or music in general you know and that actually affected my schoolwork so much term one i failed grade nine i failed uh term two which was in june i failed again in grade nine you know and then my mom was actually concerned what's going on with uh you know September 10th I failed